Hi Sagittarius, here's your horoscope for April 2024, brought to you by planetswithin.com. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, we are in eclipse season, and this is going to be a very strong solar eclipse in the sign of Aries that's going to really take charge of this month. And it's going to be right here in this fifth house of creativity. So for many of you, you're starting new projects and new relationships or new endeavors, maybe spending more time with your kids, or maybe you're having kids if you're childbearing uh, uh, years. So what we're talking about this month is a great change uh, in what you do on a regular basis. Because last month we had a, a lunar eclipse that was in Libra right up in here. So something came to an end or is coming to an end, a conclusion, a realization uh, about a partnership, an organization, a charity, uh, you know, a connection with another or an acquaintance. And over the course of the next six months to a year, these two eclipses are going to open up doorways. One's closing, another one is opening. So this is a very, very strong eclipse. And uh, if you live in the United States, it will affect the United States greatly. And I will, of course, uh, talk about that in other videos. But um, th we have your ruler, Jupiter, coming into a very strong alignment with Uranus right here. And I will talk about that in a little bit, too. But as you noticed, everything is kind of moving forward. We have planets, four planets in the fourth house. So there's a lot of feeling or family time or spending time, uh, you know, taking care of the house or property or something along those lines for many of you. Uh, health matters, of course, are on the, on the forefront here because Jupiter is going through the sixth house and Uranus is in the sixth house. So what I mean by health is uh, maybe you're caring for others. Maybe you're helping someone else. Maybe you're having pet you know, issues, maybe you're getting new pets, uh, you know, or maybe you're getting more involved in your own uh, personal well-being physically and emotionally, psychologically, the whole nine yards. But Taurus usually has a lot to do with the physical side of life, you know, like lifting weights or, you know, doing something that's moving you. And so this is all going to be highlighted, especially the second half of the month when Venus and the sun return to this part of your chart. So it's a very strong time where your routine gets bumped up quite a bit uh, could have something to do with a job work responsibilities taking care of others uh, maybe you're doing some gardening you know Taurus rules uh, gardening is uh, and so there could be something to do with gardening as well but I'm um, as you can see here a lot of the planets are down here in the fourth and the fifth house so emotions feelings and creativity are all in the mix this month, big time. And then when the energy shifts a little bit more, it'll shift into the sixth house, and I'll talk about that a little later. But first, let's get started. And Mercury begins the month in retrograde. So this is the first Mercury retrograde of the year, and it's in Aries, which represents the self. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, there's a reflection period. There's a desire to look back. There's a desire to, you know, go down uh, memory lane, especially with four planets in Pisces right here. It's probably already started, you know, in, in March because of the lunar eclipse. But with Mercury retrograde, uh, it could have something to do with self-worth, self-evaluation. If it doesn't have anything to do with you personally, then it could have something to do with your children or a loved one because the fifth house represents love and creativity. And, uh, you know, it falls under that umbrella. Maybe somebody in your life is having some self-worth issues or, you know, not sure about what they're doing and where they're going. And you're there advising them. That's a possibility here as well. But over the course of the next couple of weeks, it will definitely be uh, taking one little step back. Now, I'm not saying we're going to go back completely because this eclipse that's coming in is too powerful to ignore. So the doorway is going to like blast open for many of you with opportunity. So keep your eyes open for all of that. Now on the fifth, we have Venus entering Aries. Now Venus uh, is about partnerships and relationships and Aries is again about self and drive and determination. Even though uh, Venus in Aries can be a little selfish, a little, you know, set in its ways and rush, 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 it's in a better position than it was in Pisces only because uh, it was in your fourth house, so feeling more sensitive and more nostalgic uh, and, and maybe not even as motivated because Pisces is such a sensitive sign that it tends to 
make us more sleepy or more like not motivated. Let's put it that way. But now with Venus coming out of there and going into Aries into the fifth house, the creativity should really be going through the roof for many of you. So you're feeling inspired in many ways to start new things, to have more fun, um, to interact with people that you care about, like your children or loved ones or, you know, whoever they are in your life. And so this is going to help out a lot with Venus going through there. But like I said, the big news really is, is this new moon solar eclipse in Aries on the 8th. It's going to be at 19 degrees of Aries. So wherever this is in your actual birth chart, that's the area that gets lit up. And once again, as I say in all my videos, this is a general sun sign reading for anyone who has a sun in Sagittarius or uh, has a rising sign in Sagittarius. It has to be very general because I don't have everybody's birth chart and everyone's birth chart and birth, um, you know, uh, birth dates are different. So it has to be very general. But we have this solar eclipse, which is a doorway, a new doorway, something new, opportunity. It's conjunct Chiron, conjunct the North Node, and even conjunct Mercury retrograde. And what it's suggesting is you're taking a hard look at yourself and you're reinventing yourself and you're looking at the healing potential within yourself. If it, again, does not pertain to you personally, it could have something to do with someone in your life because, again, the fifth house represents children or loved ones. So, but generally speaking, when we have uh, such a powerful solar eclipse, it's like it's 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 invigorating us. It's it's starting something new. It's it's reinventing ourselves. Okay, and so this is a great time to just brush yourself off and go. That's it. I'm starting this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to improve. I'm going to realize who I really am because that's the key here. Because Aries represents the self. And I'm sure many of you Sag, rising sun sign Sag people have, you know, questioned reality and who are we, where are we come, where do we come from, you know, who, you know, what is this world really made up of? Uh, because uh, Sagittarius is the philosopher, you know, and they're always looking for the meaning of life. And so uh, this is going to really invigorate so many of you into a new direction, new projects, new endeavors, creativity. Uh, but let's not forget the fun factor here. Okay, because it is in Aries, another uh, fire sign like yours. And so it's in the fifth house. So the need to have some fun is absolutely going to be very important over the next couple of months. Now, with eclipses, like I said earlier, they could take up to six months to a year to manifest themselves. And so usually within the first three months of an eclipse, uh, it gets activated. Then again, it's six months, nine months, and then 12 months. So you've got a whole year. To really start something new, going in a new direction, making things happen, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So this is going to be very powerful. So set your intentions for whatever it is you want to accomplish in this coming year. Now on the 19th, everything starts to change because the sun enters Taurus right there. Now, normally it's not a big deal, but this year, as you can see here, your ruler Jupiter is conjunct unpredictable Uranus in the sixth house. So what this is suggesting is something to do with either your daily routine, your health habits, uh, uh, something to do with someone else's health habits, something to do with your job or your business. If you have a business, it may have something to do with your employees. Uh, you know, anything to do with health falls under this self umbrella. Uh, this is, so. Uh, what I'm suggesting is, is maybe if you have a business and maybe you're talking about giving your employees health care or changing it or something along those lines. But generally speaking, the sun going through here empowers you to take more action or drive or to be more motivated physically. So this is a great time to maybe uh, exercise, take care of your health, uh, improve your health, change your diet, start an exercise program. Remember, we're reinventing ourselves with that solar eclipse. But with Jupiter here, conjunct Uranus, there could be many surprises this month because of that, because Uranus is surprises, and Jupiter is about expansion. So there's going to be a lot of interesting issues coming around this, and I'm not saying they're bad or good, I'm just saying that this is going to be a primary focus. So, uh, you know, stuff like promotion, promotions in a job, traveling for a job, traveling for business, this is all possible here, Okay. But anything to do with health and daily routine is going to get a little bit more exciting after the 19th. 
Now, the full moon this month is on the 23rd, and here it is right here. So it's going to be at four degrees of Scorpio. So wherever that is in your actual birth chart, that'll activate that area. But what we're talking about here is the 12th house, spirituality, mysticism, uh, the deep uh, psychological side of life. And so something to do with health matters are absolutely being highlighted with this. Maybe you've got so much going on that you need a break psychologically, you know, uh, or retreat. You need to be by yourself a little bit. Or maybe there's something going on with work and you need to withdraw from that for a while. Whatever it is, G uh, Pluto is going to be involved in this. So there's a giant T-square taking place here with this. So it has to do with your thinking and important communication here around this time frame okay so keep an eye on uh, misunderstandings miscommunication maybe you have to have an important conversation with somebody to set them straight you know that kind of stuff and so this is going to be very important time uh, after April the 19th and as you can see here with this full moon uh, both of these signs represent finances so it could be something that's out of our control like the financial markets or the monetary system as I've been saying in my other videos and so we're hearing about it and we're needing to think about what we're doing with our investments. That is a possibility here as well. All right. So keep an eye on all of that. Now, finally, on the 25th, Mercury starts to move direct right there. This will help with clarifying issues or, you know, things that were misunderstood or, uh, you know, you start letting go of the past as Mercury makes its way direct. Then we have Venus entering Taurus as well on the 29th. So here we have four planets in that sixth house of health and service and daily routine. And so this is a wonderful time for, like I said, physical activity like exercising or helping others or being around pets, uh, you know, getting excited about your routine, uh, healing, absolutely a lot of healing energy here. Okay. Uh, so whatever you got going on medically, either with yourself or someone else, it could be a lot of healing. Uh, this is always about enjoying ourselves when Venus is in Taurus, especially with the sun in Taurus. But remember, we're full of surprises this month, so everything could surprise you, from people in their conversations to health matters with others uh, to realizations about your values and other people's values. This is all going to be in the works here with Venus in Taurus. And last but not least, talk about, you know, lighting a fire under us. Mars will enter Aries on the 30th right there. Now, Mars in Aries is restless. It is go get them. I got to do. I got to challenge myself. I got to I got to explore. I got to be a pioneering spirit. And that's what Mars is going to do. It's going to bring out a lot of energy and it's in your fifth house. So those creative projects are going to get a real major boost in your life. So whether it's just working on the house or your job or uh, whatever it is you want to do, it's going to boost up that energy big time. OK, and it's all involved here, you know, having fun, kids, responsibility, daily routine. This is all going to be amped up by the end of April. Anyway, there you have it, Sagittarius. Have a fabulous month and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.